seething. Seventy-nine T twenty-four fifty-eight learning, learning Corp Little Red Riding Hood take one. So it's funny. That's like a skyscraper now. That thing, that's an old video. I remember when I when I first moved to my place. Giant hole in the ground in front of me and like a nice shot of the Lake Ontario or whichever lake we have. I don't even know. I loved it. And they put up this swank uh, skyscraper in front of us, which is kind of annoying. At least they can't block the tower. It's too goddamn tall. Morning, fellas. Welcome to Red Morning. I... Dude, I don't know. So there's part of me that was like, man, I miss... Like, I'd love to, to, to go in the field and do more on this. But then a part of me is like, I actually love my life right now. So probably not. I think I'm just going to stick to talking about what's been done as opposed to sitting out there breaking new ground. That's the job for you young fellers. That's the job. <laughs> young fellers. Claudillo's like 38 or something like that. I don't even know. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. And this kind of ties into the topic for today. The topic for today was about how all of these tools that everybody talks about in the red pill, they're all conditional. And by conditional, in this case, I mean temporary. The example I used this week was, here, let me get my notepad up. Let's get uh, there. Let's get my notes up. Why aren't your notes already up? Hey, shut up. When you run your own podcast for four years, then you can tell me how to run mine. Yeah, I'm not Lex Friedman, Friedman, but who is? Oh my god. Oh my god. Did you see? Okay, I, I've never, I never have watched, like, a Destiny stream. I can't stand that little runt. It's just insufferable. It's everything that everybody told you about Reddit personified. You know? And I guess he went on with Norman Finkelstein. Which, if you don't know, he's like the major... Like, if you want to talk about the... <laughs> if you want to talk about the chambers, if you want to talk about the trains running on time in the 1940s, that's the guy you talk with. And he pulls no punches. Like, you know, yeah, you guys, you put up with this before. He lost five family members in Dachau. And they and Lex Friedman's got destiny, apparently, reading <laughs> Wikipedia articles to Finkelstein about the uh the German painter thing. And I just started laughing. And he looks over and he's just like you're such a moron. <laughs> and it's, it reminds me of when Red Letter Media had their William Shatner moment. Do you guys know, do you guys know who Red Letter Media is? They're like, they the ones that did like the Star Wars 90 minute uh, review. Very funny group of guys, Mike, Jay, and Rich. They've actually made a movie, Space Cop, which is pretty entertaining. And they have a huge heart on, they love Star Trek. Like they really love Star Trek. And so these guys said something kind of sarcastic and Shatner took it like they're an idiot. And then I guess all of their fans were like, no, 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 you don't understand. They're fans. And then they showed them some of their videos and they showed them the ones where they make fun of those Star Wars uh, podcasts and they act like super nerds that are super excited about Disney stuff. And, you <laughs> and so Shatner is done with them. He didn't like any of them. And. Uh, and so what ended up happening is like Mike goes on, and he tells everybody the story of how it happened. He goes, there's nothing worse than like your childhood hero, the guy you've looked up to for 20 years, just looking at you and calling you a fucking moron. <laughs> oh, it makes me laugh. Anyways, can you club me over the head with young fellers again? I don't know. I feel like I should be saying it now. I, I think once you're once you're 30, you're supposed to say young fellers. And then once you're past 35, it's when you it's when you really mean it. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I really don't feel much different than I did since I was 24. That's when my uh, that's when my joints started to hurt. She technically was teenagers. Anywho, um, yeah, temporary, temporary, conditional. Nothing here is meant to be taken as literal, and this is this is why you really have to ignore online stuff whenever you're trying to figure out your way. Like I don't know, you guys are in all various stages of your life right now. Some of you guys are chronically single some of you guys are you're doing okay but not great not definitely not where you want to be there's other guys in here that i know for a fact have like plates 
plates aplenty, girls aplenty. They're having a blast. They're enjoying life. They're they're living it. Uh, what's Rich say? Living your best life. They're all living the best life. Some of you were. You had a girlfriend. You've settled down. You moved in. Others, you married. Some of you even have kids. So you're all over the place, right? Now, the one thing I think you can admit, especially those of you who have like gone through all the different life stages, is the things that work for some don't work for others. And the things that work for some work for all of them. And that's always the that's always the trick is you have to you have to learn the difference, right? What is useful because it's universally useful for me as a man and what is useful because it's useful for me in the in what I'm trying to go for. There's been and this is like and I'm not I'm not proud to say it. Like I was on Reddit and not recently, but so there was purple pill debate and they've they've blocked the shit out of me. They hate me over there. Who would have thunk? Mostly because I'm like, I'm not here to argue. It was like, it's basically like Purple Pill Debate as if, as if Destiny was a subreddit. Anywho, so they, every now and then, some, one of them would try like a different attack vector and they would, uh... oh, it's not about fish oil for the joints, man. It's more about not having giant plates of metal crush your back or, or not getting hit by a car. It's, this pain is earned. It's not as bad anymore, so it's actually pretty good. Funny enough, I've actually got less back pain in my mid thirties than I did in my mid twenties. Who'd have thunk, right? Anywho, um, where was I going with this one? Back pain. Fuck, I lost my train of thought. That's such bad radio. It's such bad radio. Oh, uh, oh, you guys, guys, just block and move on. No sense making a big, big deal out of things. Uh, temporary, yeah, temporary categorical purple pill debate argument. And so they would bring this one up. It's what if the red pill isn't right? What if it is about, uh, if it attracts a certain type of girl and the stuff like the AWALT stuff, that's because <clears throat> the kind of guys who meet and they always played it down to class where it was like, uh, you know, lower class girls, <clears throat> which I'm pretty sure was a code for black. There was a bit of there was a bit of racism amongst the blue pillars. But yeah, everything was always about, well, you should have gone to college and met a girl there. All the good girls are there because all those girls were there. And so they're like, oh, we're the good one. All the other ones are the bad ones. It's Madonna and whore. But when women use it, they use it as a cudgel. Here's the thing, though. Not altogether wrong. It's not altogether wrong. And that's kind of where. You have to understand that you're acting a certain way to attract a certain type of person. And all women are generally the same with a little bit of variation. But again, they all have life stages too. If you want to meet a party girl, dude, 23, 24, 25, 26 year olds, absolutely amazing. They love to have fun. They don't want you to catch feelings, stuff like that. Uh, if you want to date somebody, it's like, I want to date somebody seriously and look about getting a family, you know, 30s, great, 28, 29, 30. You might get lucky and find the 23 year old that wants to stick around with you long time. And then by 28, she has baby rabies, which is normally how most people did it that I knew growing up. Like everybody in their early twenties, we were like fresh, ordinary seamen sailors. We'd all get our girls from the bar, the 20 year olds, the 21 year olds, the 22 year olds. We were pushing 30, whatever. And then they just sat around and dated with us. Then come like 28, they'd start having baby rabies and the guys would start having the desire for a family in their late thirties. And that's just seems to be how it works. But they say that like it's a bad thing, you know? Well, if you're doing this, you're only going to attract a certain type of girl. That's true. We are only going to attract a certain type of girl. And if we're acting a certain way, it's because it's a certain type of girl we're into. I don't think a lot of people really know that either. It's like, how could you not be into, you know, girls that want to make you happy, that want to cook, that want to stay in shape, that want to all the things that you like, because those are your boundaries, right? Well, yeah, but you're going to get a low quality girl. What does low quality mean? Well, she didn't go to. And a low quality always translates to whoever the speaker is. Be like me at work for me. I'm the only kind of girl that you should want. Well, not me, but another girl that's exactly like me, but not me because I don't like you because you're a red pill guy. It really lets you know how much I hate. I hate discussion and debate because it's just people running their fucking mouth, man. It drives me nuts. And it drives it should drive you nuts, too. Anywho. Um, this one's not really, this is more freeform. I don't have like a structured lesson plan to it. I just got a couple points that I wanted to hit and then we'll banter and have some fun. We'll totally rip into people too. 
I haven't made fun of that redheaded centaur gummy bitch in a while, so I figured, why not? But here's what I mean. So, yeah, you're like, low quality is what I decide is low quality. I don't say squat. She just has to get it. All this stuff, we're on the same page. But that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is, like, the <laughs> there's this really great line from, I think it's Human Sock Puppet. It's that you're a man. Um, you're the only one fit to do anything with his life on this earth. And I'm paraphrasing it here, but I, I got it mostly right. You're the only one fit to do anything of, of quality in this world. And so everybody is going to try and manipulate you and force you by hook and by crook to get you to do what they want you to do. Your job as a man is to say no and then learn to make and then make sure that if you if you are giving somebody something, you're getting, you know, good compensation. I really should have looked it up because his quote is so much more profound. In fact, I'm going to do that now because I know exactly where to find it. You know, to refine 10 year old comments that one guy left eventually. Yeah. You don't. Everybody's talking about their. Uh, internal monologues. I'm sitting here talking about your photographic memory. It's like a curse. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. And it should be right here. There she is. All right. You are a man. You are the only creature on this planet fit to accomplish anything of worth. And because of that, the rest of the world will always try to twist your mind or twist your arm or force you by deception or threat of imprisonment to accomplish their goals instead of your own. Learn to recognize when this is happening and take back control of your life so that you can do the things that you want to do. That's human sock puppet. And I was like, damn, that's pretty good. I like that. It's right up there with Royce's. If you've been on the, if you've been a watcher for a while, you probably already know this one, but that's fine. No, it's, that's red pill. 100% red pill. And when you hear these arguments, you can't help but think back to that. Like this whole, well, that's just attracting low quality woman. And another quote is like, there was this great quote. I think it's Greek where there's only ever two arguments, one for action and one for inaction. So when you see a lot of these people arguing, well, what about the low quality woman? What about this? What about that? They're arguing for you to do nothing. They're arguing for status quo. Stop trying, stop doing it, whatever. And they can have a hundred thousand different motivations and who gives a shit? I don't really care what your motivations are. I just noticed you're telling me to do something that you want me to do and you're offering me nothing in response. Nothing in response. It just seems like uh, guys are so easy to manipulate that people have got so lazy to even trying to do it. They just ramble at you. That's it. Oh, it's a it's an old blog post that I've got that from. You could probably find it on Reddit somewhere. If you search through human sock puppets, uh, if you search through his posting history, but I don't know. It's it, that's a bit of a slog. Until we're on Patreon, I'm not gonna start doing that kind of deep dive research into this stuff. Yeah, one for action, one for inaction. And so you realize this, everybody, and this is like another like 500 reasons why communication is not helpful. And this is one too, because communication is basically an action. Everybody wants to talk. And what do they want to talk about? I feel bad. I want to feel good. I say the things that I want you to do to make me feel good. And you're like, all right, what's in it for me? I won't shame you for it. I won't call you names. It's like, well, eat a dick. Eat all the dicks. As Marty, as Marty would say, dicks, dicks, dicks. I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to do what you want. Like there's a there's a trend lately. Nuclear nuclear quadio is in uh is in Twitter, and he brings up some pretty basic bitch red pill stuff. It's not the it's not the creme de la creme, but it's not the point. And then you'll always see a bunch of weird, like the the weirdo girls that used to hiss on you in high school. They're like 25 now, and they're all like, "Nuke is such an asshole." And so I've been posting that old meme. You know the three panel one where it's but people talking, a girl bitching. And a big thumbs up and then they go back to talking because that's essentially what that is. But then you realize like all of these people arguing with you, it's they don't want any like they want everything, but they're absolutely not willing to give it to you. And this is why other than for entertainment value for the Twitter, which I've been on private now for like two weeks, which is so nice. It's so nice. The amount of rabble is is like dropped off substantially. I love it. But. Uh, yeah, the amount of people that think they're owed you getting mad at them or you having an argument with them and they're not even fucking you it's like bro look my my old lady she takes care of me she 
She cooks me food. She helps me clean the house. You know, she helps me take care of the dogs, all the other bedroom stuff, all that stuff. She can have an argument with me. And even then, I barely argue with her. I Most of the time, I'm like, eh. Unless it's like something when I realize, like, yeah, we need to have a little fight. It'll be fun. If there's something we need to sort out, it's usually not a fight. It's usually a logistics issue. But some random chick halfway across the world, who's probably a dude with a chick's avatar anyway, is sitting there demanding you have an argument and get and get mad at them without even offering so much as like a, a handy. Like, come on, man. And I realized how many guys I look online and that's what everybody does. Do it sometime. Go on as like you as like you don't know anybody and you just read through the timeline. It's nothing but catty, passive aggressive frustration, you know? And those tools work great when you're unplugged, when you're getting nothing out of anybody, and the only feelings you get are having a, a love is blind reunion tour level of like micking at each other, you know? So those those tools are great there. And then you unplug, you get your zeroing out, you start getting red pilled, you start understanding the terms, and those tools aren't useful anymore. But that's the problem is a lot of guys still use them. There's a lot of red pill uh, 101 avatar like I've, somebody i've never heard of is like i'm the original red pill i'm like who the fuck is this guy like i may not know him personally but i know of them there's very 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 few people in the red pill that i haven't heard of it's not saying that i'm the gatekeeper of it i'm just saying like i've been around enough i can usually take that as a pretty good fast and loose method of, of deciding who's worth a damn and who's just running their mouth but they still do it they're like oh you fucking bitches that's why my jokes are like, whammon, am I right? My misogyny is cheeky and funny. Your misogyny is realistic and emotional. We're not the same. And they're still yelling at girls. It's like, yeah, dude, you're past that now. You got to get into that mindset. Although I hate saying mindset anyway. You just got to start acting right. Start acting right. Yeah, it's almost like unhealthy behaviors to seek validation. Almost, stripper. Almost. The only difference is it's such the weirdest. It's like the laziest validation. It's the fast food. Not even the fast food. It's the, you know, like it's the, it's the Vietnamese street meat validation. That's what it is. <laughs> you're not the gatekeeper. I thought you were the most important guy in the world. F this guy. <laughs> Dude, it's so weird. Like none of them has matter and we're just acting so self-important. It's the ridiculous. It's, I, I know I'm keep getting distracted by the meta, but it's like just... Tate sitting there talking like he's the king of the world. Oh. <laughs> so there's this thing um pearl reached out to me like a year ago something like that said she wanted to do some kind of documentary and she was told that i'd be a good person to talk to to be in it and i said thank you for the offer i'm gonna have to decline that was it and i thought you know what it's not good enough this is back before she decided to turn into a to block me and stuff but it was like and then i'm like here i'm gonna do you a solid uh when you start petitioning the other people for this don't mention doc. Oh, she said it was similar to the Cassie J one. And I'm like, do yourself a favor. Don't ever bring up the Cassie J thing with this people, because anybody who's worth talking to is going to tell you to go pound sand. Yeah. So just don't mention that. She got, okay, thanks. Anyway, so Glenn, old, old rule zero guy, Glenn is in the background on Pearl stuff. I have a feeling he's on that documentary with her and I have a feeling Myron's going to go too. And I thought about it. I'm like, this reminds me of when the men's rights advocates like paul elam and then like the 500 soccer moms that want you to treat men better did that cassie j one and the mra was like this is perfect this will be the best opportunity for me to get clout and cassie j made it all about her and all the guys were essentially there to, to promote the, the cassie j chick who's gone now and i'm like that would be wonderful if myron and glenn and pearl and tate and all these guys that were kind of going down that road like I was, and then, well, some of them are going down the JF Garropy, Andy Worski road too, which if you haven't seen that, oh my God, JF Garropy, he's pretty much known as the guy who murdered his wife, <laughs> the Quebec separatist, race realist, everybody hates that guy. But that's the point is he's, everybody's a nobody and everybody's fighting so hard to be like just above nobody, but they're, they're de desecrating their, their own like identity. Hey, but let's get back to topic. Yeah. So the rules, the, 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 the mental models before don't work anymore. And those were bad mental models before. The ones like yelling at women to feel something, feel alive, and avoid not getting sex, get validation. Absolutely. Horrible mental models, but they still are. And then you get to the red pill, you start learning about that, and you realize, oh, okay, so like, yeah, I don't have to, I don't have to engage with all these broads and do dumb shit. Well, that's nice. That's nice. 
We're going hard on the caffeine today, by the way. So come on. And then you get to the point where you're past that phase. So maybe like you're, you're, you're not angry at women. You know, the work you have to do to get to a place where, you know, you have your plate rotation. I'm, I'm going like all the way down the gamut here. Right? And you get through there and then you realize, yeah, a little like, you know, playful misogyny, that kind of stuff. So you kind of add a little bit more to it again, because girls don't like a guy who's a pushover. You start getting better with boundaries. And just the just the not getting angry thing isn't enough. And those don't those models don't work anymore either. Like, what do you do if you're angry? Yeah, you just, they're just hoes, you know, whatever. And you're like, yeah, everybody's a hoe. And then you're cool with it. And then you get your plates and then you learn how to manage plates. You learn how to like keep your schedule right. A lot of and there's a lot of common problems that guys have that they have to work their own new mental models for. Like the funniest one is where guys who are dating multiple women, they start mixing up details like they get the names wrong. They, they talk to the wrong girl about, hey, remember when we went to uh, uh, whatever Wappity Splash last week? And the girl's like, what? That wasn't me. Who was that? And you're like, ah. so there's a mental model for that. It turns out a lot of guys, they actually feel embarrassed by that. They feel shame. They're like, oh, I'm supposed to get this right. I'm basically insulting the girl. I'm making her feel bad. I better. No, 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 no. I just made that up. Whatever, whatever. It's like, no, no, no. Lean into it. It's OK. No apologies. She knows you're not dating her exclusively. You know you're not dating her exclusively. Don't worry about it. It's like, or like when they find like, a, whose underwear is this? Oh, I don't know. Do you want it? <laughs> I don't need it anymore. Yes, rule zero is on Nuke's channel. Yeah, if I can, I think I can. I'll set the I'll set the thing to it, so you guys can go directly there. You don't even have to search. You just click. How awesome is that? Is it his monk mode? Oh, it's dragon ship. There she is. All right. Anyways, don't worry. It'll, it'll redirect you once you're, once we're done here. So then you get past that play and everybody, everybody always gets past. I don't care who you are at some point when you're doing your two to three to six plates on a regular basis for an extended period of time, almost without exception, the exceptions prove the rule kind of thing. A guy will be like, you know what? Uh, this is a lot, man. I gotta, I gotta pair it back. And they either pair it back to like, yeah, just one, or maybe they'll, they'll pick one of them and settle down. And that's, that's the route I went. And other guys just kind of like, ah, I'm just gonna stick one maker my good plate, and the other ones are just kind of like, you know, soft next to them, right? And then there's a whole bunch of different mental models, mental models in play. Because the first thing guys do once they settle down with a single girl is they start thinking, they start reverting back to their, their blue pill conditioning whatever they want to call it. But you know what I mean? The way you were acting before, back when you were yelling at women on Twitter. <laughs> back when you were yelling at women on Twitter. So you got to be nice. You got to be cheerful. And that's an absolutely the wrong play. Cause like the girl fell for the, the asshole acting like the nice guy is not going to help you because she's like, what the hell? As soon as I started dating him, he turned into a weeb. So yeah, you have to actually act the way you were supposed to act. And this is where a lot of guys, they have to learn that mental model where, oh, it's not parlor tricks. It's not tricks. It's not having to be on for like a couple hours on the weekends. No, you have to be, that has to be you. It's an actual like identity thing. It's as close as you get to self-therapy as it gets, right? A lot of guys don't get that. They kind of just supplicate. And that's the problem is that like failure, the feedback for failure doesn't come very frequently it doesn't come right away other times people just give you no feedback because like nobody's obliged to give you feedback it's like hey you've acted 16 percent less attractive today. they can't even if they wanted to they can't even if they wanted to so all you notice is like one day you wake up you're been dating this girl for a year and she's just sitting at home she's getting fatter i haven't had gotten laid in six months you're like what the fuck how'd this happen no feedback and this is where this is where like a lot of guys, and I, I always love this phase. I call it like red pill too. I, I, I mean, I don't always call it that, but I have to get a better name for it because they'll be, they'll always say, yeah, I was big in the space back in 2010 and I left for a bit. I got a girlfriend and now I'm in that same boat as everybody else. Why won't my wife sleep with me? You're typing it from the toilet and you're like, oh fuck. And you're like, it's 2016. You're like, dude, six years. And they're like, all right, welcome again. And then you realize you literally have to start from scratch. And it's because most guys treat these, they don't treat the mental models as, as tools to help you build an identity, you know, from the ground up and have that identity work in your favor. 
act better, have better boundaries, understand expectations, all this, all the good, fancy, heartfelt stuff that uh, the Red Pill guys have been working on figuring out on their own, right? Yeah, I'm Red Pill now. I control the universe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all that stuff. No, it's it's just. It's all temporary. It's all categorical or not categorical, um, conditional. So they have to start from scratch again because, yeah, it's not it's not parlor tricks. You can't stick your feathers up your butt and be a chicken like, oh, so I don't have to pretend to be an asshole. It's like, no, you're going to be an asshole. But what does asshole even mean? Asshole means I don't like it. I mean, I'll say I don't like it. It's not that I don't like it because girls actually do like it. It's like Nuke says, I'm not a good man. I am not a good man. I can't do the Nuke voice. He's got that Jay-Z vibe to him, you know? Uh, where am I going with this? Yeah, because ultimately the reason you're an asshole is because anything that doesn't put a woman's interest first is considered heinous. And that's not a bug of human nature. That's a feature. Society would die off if we didn't treat our, venerate our women, deify our women. Back in the day, you know, you got 15 cousins, six brothers, and 10 women. All of those women have to survive if you guys want to last a generation, but only like one or two of those guys have to survive. Well, that's how it has to be. That's how it has to be. And it's, it's, it's coded into our DNA, right? Yeah, but good men are honorable. That's another goofy one. Like, it's not wrong, but here's the thing. The guys who say that are absolutely the ones you can't trust. Like, you know that like every couple months, there's always that thing where you see some chick getting decked because she's like, Starting some shit with some third world guy, and the third world guy's having none of it, and so he just cold cocks her. Where are all the men to help right now? And all the guys talking about how like how much you need to cheerlead this and how much you need to fight for the honor of women. They're the first ones that'll be like hiding underneath a, a dumpster. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Because the guys that can fight don't talk about it. it. Just puts a target on your back. It's the worst thing you can do. If you're ever talking about how tough you are and you end up in a situation where you will be in a fight, who do you think they're looking at first? All right, there's five guys here. It's a five on five. That guy's been talking about how tough he was. Let's get him first. He's obviously the toughest one. It's like, no, man. It was, uh, kind of reminds me of in the, in the Navy. They, they gave us this saying. It's like, don't make jokes about uh, security infractions. Like, you know, losing classified stuff, stealing tape stuff. No jokes about it. Like, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, we get it. That's great. But here's the problem. One day, if a piece of cryptography disappears, you're the first one everybody's going to look at because you were the one that was making jokes about it. You were the one talking about it. But yeah, don't do it. Don't fucking joke about this stuff. Same thing with violence. Uh, there's a mannequin in the store here that has the exact same Griffith hairdo. Next time I'll send you a photo. That's too funny. Uh, strippers in the chat, I heard a great analogy. There are holes in a big boat, ones that are easy to see and fix, and the dangerous ones are the small ones that fill the boat all of a sudden, and the boat's filled. That works. That works. I guess I could give, like, a, a running example, but that's the problem, is, like, whenever you try to make this succinct and pithy, it's hard. That's why you have to go with these, like, universal platitudes. It's like, it. if I'm bringing up how... Actually, you know what? I can bring up one example that'll totally exemplify what I'm talking about uh, when it comes to models changing. It's uh, nice guy stuff. If you guys have followed me for any length of time, you should know, and I, I swear to God, if you haven't read it by now, you're wasting your time here. If you haven't gone through No More Mr. Nice Guy by Robert Glover, if you haven't gone through When I Say No, I Feel Guilty by Manuel Smith, if you haven't been through those two books, if you want to get 85 to 90% of the red pill solid, those two books have all the models you need. Everything else is the extra 10%. It's a very, it's a very, very ruthless market. And some of the tools in there that are good when it comes to handling, uh, handling women, I guess. They, they, they say it's pretty universal, and it kind of is, but for our perspective, we'll see that. And that's the tools that you'll see, like, bogging. You know, I can see how you'd feel that way. Amused mastery. Oh, that's adorable, babe. Go get me a beer. Uh, a green amplify. Oh, yes, I'm sleeping with everybody right now. Don't worry about it. Negative assertion. Why would you think that? Negative inquiry? Or no, negative inquiries. Why would you think that? Negative assertion. Um, nuking. 
all these models, right? So one common problem I've noticed is that I'll go through Mids Watch live stream, talk about this. I'll go through the Patreon and talk about this. And then you get some guy who's like, yeah, I was on a date with a girl and she started running her mouth and I started fogging in this. I'm like, whoa, 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 slow down. You're not there yet. You're not there yet. Well, isn't, aren't these good tools? Yes, they are absolutely good tools. If a girl is running her mouth with some stupid bullshit, fogging is a great way to like let her run her mouth and acknowledge that she had feelings without validating them and making them real in her mind. But that's a gift. Treat everything of yours as if it's valuable. If it's a girl you just met, if it's a girl you just started dating, if it's a girl you haven't even slept with yet, why are you using fogging? Why are you using negative assertion? Why are you using amused mastery? She hasn't earned any of this. Like, what do you mean? This is a reward? Everything is a reward. Women live off of validation. They live off of attention. You've seen the kind of shit? There was a chick that was licking a toilet for likes. And this is before, like, TikTok. This is like a Facebook thing. They weren't even making money off of it. They just wanted the little, they wanted the little numbers in the thing to look like bigger numbers in the thing. And I'm like, bro. She was willing to lick, and it was like a toilet in an airplane, too, or something stupid like that. Not even like a home toilet where you can sanitize it, or like one at Home Depot where it hasn't been used yet. No, no, no. She's using the used one. So, yeah, that's what they need. So here's my thing. You met, a, you met a girl and she's so either. Either she's so has such abundance that she doesn't have to give up. It just runs her mouth about everything, because what are you going to do about it? Everybody here wants to fuck me. And if you touch me, everybody here will will prove to me how worthy they are by stomping you into the ground, which is another reason why it's not good to get in arguments with women you barely know. But here's the point. Or she's so socially awkward that she does not know how to flirt. Dude, there's the, there was this one chick and I even told Newt. I'm like, dude, either either smash or pass because this chick's going to my goddamn nerves. It was some mid software developer chick, whatever. You know, red pill, me, 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 me. I'm like, oh. Meanwhile, she's like in DMs with some guys I know and they're like, yeah, she's definitely flirting. I'm like, oh, OK, fair enough. But I realized like, yeah, it's OK. She, she just doesn't know how to flirt. It reminds me of when you're like six years old and the girl's trying to flirt with you and they don't know how. So they just punch you in the face. Just acting super bratty, which is technically a shit test, by the way. When a girl acts super bratty like that, it's a shit test. So you got two, you got two avenues to go with this one. Cocky funny or just boundary enforcement. And it's tricky because as a guy, you guys tend to lean towards nexting. Now, God, screw this. I'm out. I don't have to put up with this shit. And it's like, it's not shit to put up with. She's flirting with you. But what about this one here where you can tell she's like, I remember this too in college. I remember so many guys, like I had a bunch of uh, very slutty female friends, <laughs> small town, you know, what are you going to do? And they, you could tell they weren't going to sleep with the guy, but they just wanted to see what they could get away with. And they start just fucking with them. And then the guy's holding out hope. Oh yeah, this might be great. This might be great. Yeah. yeah you know, it'd be great. My friends to have a round of drinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got you, babe. Never got nothing from it. So it's, it's a real skill to be able to tell the difference between a girl who's down and awkward or is just fucking with you. But most guys will either assume everybody's fucking with them. And this is totally normal amongst guys. I call it like the ugly duckling types, you know? I was never attracted before. I used to be a fat kid and I lost a bunch of weight, but I'm still going to act like a fat kid. And, you know, the fat kid, nobody wants to sleep with him. So when some girl's hitting on him, his first thought is, where's the camera? Who's trying to, who's trying to sneak something on me here? Who's playing a trick on me? You know? <laughs> Dad 2.0, shut up. Don't you guys ever put me in that position of parasocial relationship? I've seen what you guys did to Peterson. You ain't going to get me, motherfucker. You're not getting me. You're not getting me. Oh, he did. That's good. I have I have it on my my to do list is to check the let it burn. So I'll be good. Uh, yeah. So if it, you have to kind of learn to act when you're fat guy, you have to learn to act fat because that's a protective thing. You don't want to get played and made a fool of. But then when you become thin, a lot of people who used to fuck with you are now not fucking with you. But you can't tell the difference. Again, this is a trick, and this is why you can't just read red pill books and know what you're doing. You have to go. And you have to experience things. You have to go try to sleep with like, you know, 20 girls or 30 girls, 
or however many girls. Sleep with enough girls until you forgot about some. Like, who the hell are you? Uh, you were inside me last weekend. I'm like, cool. I'm proud. <laughs> I could have I could have done a lot worse. <laughs> You have to go out there in the field because then you got to learn. It's like, oh, when you're attractive, you can just get away with this stuff. Oh, you can talk like an asshole. And then when you realize like the girl is acting like a bitch on Twitter and you're like, oh, this bitch is pissing me off. You're like, oh, I get it. She's flirting. And you kind of have to just like. Here, stop, stop, stop. I, I, I got it. I'll take it from here. <laughs> and it's like, stop flirting. I'll flirt. It's fine. <laughs> Sit there. Smile. Look pretty. Tussle with your hair. When I put my hand on you, smile and touch it back. We can, can you do that with me? Can you do that with me? <laughs> so again, but it's all conditional. And if you don't, if you don't understand the, the temporary and transitory nature of a lot of these mental models, then you're not going to make it. You just won't. Most guys, most normal guys already know what I'm talking about. They've all got stories of when they were uh, hitting on a, a girl was hitting on them, but they thought they were just being a giant bitch. They realized, oh, she was flirting. I didn't even know she was into me. Most normal well-adjusted guys have that i don't know what the ratio is in this chat for example of well-adjusted guys to no offense autistic tards i don't know I, I like to think it's a higher ratio than the average but you know everybody tells themselves that <laughs> destiny thinks his audience is the smartest audience in the world and which is true i mean the only people that are dumber than destiny are his fans so for him he must think like that's if i'm the measure these guys are just below me like, yes, they are. Yeah, not looking for trouble. Certainly not going to do it with an insufferable girl either. That's the thing. That's the choice you get to make. And that's the whole thing about this. It's not about maximizing your amount of women. It's about learning what you will and won't put up with, your expectations. If you aren't getting laid and your slump buster is this really cranky broad that you're like, dude, I'm going to hate fuck her later. That's great. Go for it. Get her. But if you've, I'll actually tell a story to get this point across as opposed to preaching because it's, it's so much easier. There was uh, this guy, 42, divorced, took the red pill, started dating again, learning about the game side of things. And he was like, yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing how abundance works. Like he was a, probably my favorite example of abundance. So when he first got out into the world, post-divorce, he said he was 42. It's like 10-year-old thing. He's probably in his 50s now. He's like, dating was hard. I didn't know how to talk to girls. It's been too long. And so he ended up with, and he called her a four, a three or a four, some fat Jamaican lady. And he's like, you know what? I got it out of my system. That's fine. She was actually happy to see me, which is pretty cool. Like she actually wanted me and she, yeah, she was horrible. But then that gave him the confidence to go back out and hit on other girls. And he'd like move up the ranks. Because this one's like a three. This one's like a three and a half. Then I had myself a four. And this four was was pretty good like she worshiped the ground he walked on she made him sandwiches she liked hanging around him he's like dude she's pleasant as hell she's not easy on the eyes but she's super pleasant and then eventually on the dating he was noticing like as i get success under my belt i start to get more success he's like huh found himself he calls it a seven my first seven it's like it was crazy we were flirting it was going great all of a sudden she starts acting really bitchy towards me or like not bit like just like bratty Brett. And it wasn't that he's like getting shot down. He's like, he sat there and he had a moment outside of himself where he goes, do I really need to put up with this? Like, yeah, she's, she's cuter than the one I got at home, but I got, I'm one phone call away from a girl making me dinner and then blowing me on the couch. And yeah, that girl's, that girl's only a four, but how much is this seven really worth? I don't. And the worst part is I don't even remember if he if he ended up taking the seven home or not i really don't because it doesn't it doesn't matter in the story but he, that those little epiphanies if you can have those little epiphanies it makes all the difference man all the difference he just realized like i'm not on this world to put up with your shit and you can say this like you know alex and i can talk about oh, i'm not putting up with that shit which is true and we aren't but but you can't really say that until you have alternative options you know Anyways, let's make fun of somebody. I don't know. But I only know what my heart feels. And my heart feels like... My heart still feels like the best... You know, the best is yet to come. I need to put, like, a little zoom in on that. For, like, uh, the best. Then, like a, like, a whip zoom 
or I think it's what they call it. Best is yet to come where it's kind of like direct in the eyes. So you can look into his soul. Dude, people are still commenting on that video, by the way, the one where I was like ripping into Stebner for being a moron. Why are you so mean to him? I'm like, dude, this video's two years old. And then somebody tried chiming in with a story. And I'm like, thank God for notifications, because I would have never known about any of this two year old conversation that just came back. Where he's like, yeah, he wrote an article that made fun of Rolo and Ryan can't have that. I'm like, this guy clearly missed the three years of Stedman calling me a low IQ moron. And then me running the victory lap of him going to jail. So whatever you have your you have your story. I have mine. <laughs> mine just so happens to have receipts. And I just sent there's like a, if you ever want to see that that goofiness start, it started with a hashtag upstream Twitter. So if you ever look up hashtag upstream Twitter, you'll see a lot of nonsense and a whole lot of shit. Posts. Whole lot of shit. Posts. So yeah, I liked that one. I, the Sometimes you got to go back to the Bush Leagues. And that's the whole idea of a slump buster in abundance. I think it was Uncle Vaz. Vasily Zaitev said, until you've had multiple plates for an extended period of time, you're never going to truly understand the nature of women. And he's absolutely right. Like, he's right. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's very few iron rules. If I ever had to steal something to make the own Ryan's iron, Ryan's iron, uh, it's, that doesn't roll off the tongue. I maybe have to come up with a different metal. Ryan Silver Rules, maybe. Yeah, some people think Ryan is Rolo's disgusting attack dog. It's weird. Well, it's not that it's weird. It's that it, it's... So here's your rule of thumb on this thing. If somebody is... Not here. If somebody is telling you something like that like they just throw out some accusation you always take that second like do they have a point point? and if it doesn't have a point you can already tell flat out that's how, that's because that's how they can think of the situation that's how they're thinking of the situation this is um really useful sexual strategy for example if a girl like yeah they accuse you of cheating fine whatever but if they're always accusing you of cheating it's kind of a red flag it lets you know it is because they're constantly cheating and so they're hyper aware of it and they're projecting that onto you because they feel guilty about it. So yeah, if you're ever with a girl who's like super neurotic and you have to feel like I'm constantly reassuring her I'm not cheating, check those DMs, man. Check those DMs. The 42 lawns. Ryan's fairest. Dude, you guys and your goddamn science. Remember, for, for the stuff that works for me, it needs to be very lowbrow, blue collar, but then like profoundly deep. Like, that's the kind of wordsmithing I need here. And it's a very difficult thing to do. I meant to say disgruntled, not disgusting. Yeah, the Stone Temple Pilot's cute. Uh, where was I going with this one? Oh, yeah, the, the cheating one. Yeah, same thing. Anytime somebody accuses you of something, if it has no merit, chances are it's because... Because people can only think... Like, people can only talk about how they think. That's it. If you're not thinking it, you can't say it. It's flat out. It should, it should be without, <clears throat> without question. That's what I'm saying here. So always think about that. Very few people are able to objectively look outside and comment on something, especially people who are angry as soon as people are emotional, which I'll never understand why people are emotional. I'm just a photograph on an avatar. Nuke isn't even a photograph. I think, I don't know, isn't his picture his dog or something on his, what is his Twitter fucking photo? I don't even know. Uh, Twitter. It's funny too, because if he changed his avatar, I'd probably forget who he was. Who's this guy? Oh, that's new. Oh, he changed his photo. Got it. Yeah, so it's just like his... Ju you know what's funny? Yeah, it's just... Well, it's not even you in a suit. It's like your lower jaw and you in a suit. This is... This is the exact look that you give uh, Catholic girls. They love this one, where they show, like, the side of their jawline and then their clavicle. And anytime you're arguing with somebody on Twitter or you're going to get somebody's like making on you on Twitter and you look over and you see that side jaw profile, you're like, oh, fuck, I'm done with this one. I'm done with this one. So, yeah, that's a that's a fun little thing for you, too. Uh, Mustang, did I see this? No, I didn't see this. Look, I know I shit post a lot and I make I goofy comments. I never actually watch the videos I shit post. I never do. I, I see the comment on it and I see the first like two seconds without sound because as you're scrolling, you have to watch some of it. 
And then I, I make a pretty snap judgment about what's going on. And I'm always right. Always right. It's probably power. He won't do what I want. You guys are going off. All right, let's uh, let's change the pace. Where is? Yeah, there. Hey, brother, what do you think is the funniest member of Rule Zero Squad? Now, what's your favorite comment joke of theirs? I think Ryan brings good laughs. He does. <laughs> Ryan is like British humor. It's like Monty Python. <laughs> People are like, if you get it, you laugh your ass off. If you don't get it, you're like, fuck <laughs> Ryan. People just don't get his humor. Who's the funniest one on there? You mean besides John Fitch? <laughs> I think John Fitch is the funniest member of Rule Zero, but he's unintentionally funny. One of the robot dogs. The same robot dog in real life was pretty surreal and terrible. <laughs> and a cappy's pretty funny. It can be pretty funny too. Who's the funniest one? I swear to God, if this run in my mouth and the microphone thing doesn't work out, I'm just going to start doing promos for like John and Rolo and then Paul and them. Because, dude, I think that's that if they if they were earning serious money and I could do this for a living, I totally would. Would Ryan watch any of this if it wasn't a job? I don't watch it and it is my job. How bad is that? Look, I'll put I'll put it this way. When it comes to learning and teaching and understanding the red pill, the one thing I've never had to do is watch people's online content. So that should tell you exactly how useful most people are online here. Exactly how much you can learn, exactly how much you can use. 90%, 90% of what you watch on here is cheerleading. Hey guys, we're team red pill. Yay. And you sitting there, it's like, yeah, I'm part of an awesome team. Well, how do you know you're awesome? Because he's got Six figure subscriber counts and six pack abs. How do you know? Because he showed me photos of it, of a six year old photo he had with abs on it. Wow. What are those subscribers? Oh, those are great. You know, you can buy subscribers, right? And nobody actually cares for those as a metric. Shut up. He's awesome. He's popular. It's like one of our big inside jokes is uh, Chesty, Rule Zero Dad. He has a smart TV that has YouTube on it and it's not logged in. And every now and then he'll watch like a Rolo thing or a me thing on there and then it'll recommend him other channels that are similar to it and it's like every week the uh the red pill factory is coming out with a brand new anime avatar making fun yelling at whammon who are doing tiktoks like a tyler the fiend a ribby the frog he had two new ones what the fuck were they again i don't even remember i gotta i gotta pay attention there he is Emily W. King, as if Adderall took form as a target shopper. That's another, that's another red pill guy. That's funny. Yeah, none of this matters. None of this. Like, why, why don't you take this more seriously? Like, no, no. I take the book seriously. Because the book is actually work. That's where I, I took 10 years of work. You know, 10 years of work, thousands of guys, five or six different books, synthesized all of that knowledge into a single tome, well, two tomes. Hopefully the best job I could do. Hopefully it's enough that it's, it's, it's digestible for others and useful. I mean, you gotta always think that, but everybody who makes the greatest work of art thinks that, and everybody who makes the piece of shit books thinks that, so. It's not up to me. It'll be up to you guys. And it's not even you guys. Like, you guys can call it shit all day. But at the end of the day, there's a bunch of numbers on it. Those are the ones that really matter. Not subscriber counts. Unit sales. Those ones matter. The Red Pill Factory. Please no. Well, somebody, oh, dude, yeah, no, there, there's a factory because somebody did that. They made a new YouTube account and they started watching my videos and they saw who you recommended. I was so, I was so annoyed. It lumped me in. It was like there was six content creators that it recommended to him. There was me. There was 33 Secrets, which, oh, my God, we got a history with that fucking showed. There was a Bulldog Mindset. If you can believe, Mr. I'm leaving the Manosphere, but not changing a damn thing. <laughs> I think it had one of Rich's Lady Nights, and I can't remember what the sixth one was. Some guy I've never heard of before, but he was kind of doing the same thing. Oh, that was right. RSD. It was with RSD, RSD Owen, or Ty. Is it Owen or Tyler? Which one's the fat guy and which one's the cokehead? I can never keep them straight. And I realized, like, is this, is this my people? In which case, I'm out. Cut a goat in half. Walk through the entrails. We're going to start a new tribe. We're going to walk the desert. Now, what can I tell you? This place is a shithole. It's just kind of, you own it. But I don't mind it. You know what it is? It's like a dive bar. I don't know about you guys, but I love having like a really piece of shit. 
like a diet, like one where you don't like the tables are sticky. You don't want to touch the walls. They don't have any of the fancy beers. It's just, you just get Molson or get the fuck out. And they still take cash only stuff like that. You have to go to an ATM to go drink there. The lights are super dark. I love dive bars like that. I like, I love going to a pub where like there's a not insignificant chance of me getting into a fight sometime here. I love that stuff. And I honestly think that when it comes to content creation, the red pill is kind of like the dive bar of content. <laughs> I used to say it was the most toxic place, but then uh, Tekken 8 came out and I started like trying to follow a lot of guys in the Tekken 8 community. It's just as bad. It's just as bad. The women there, instead of like ranting about guys being misogynist, they're like, oh, they're toxic gamers. You got to ban them. And the guys, instead of being incels, they're just like green rank. And you're like, oh, my God, I just realized now it's like it's not that red pill is a piece of shit. It's that the world is a piece of shit. And this is another mental model to try and tie it back to the topic here. So very convolutedly. Is. From adulthood on, you work at. Tailoring your life. Putting the people around you that you enjoy spending time. with. You're a smart person. You start to meet other smart people. You start to do smart things, blah, blah, blah. If you're a failed smart person, you start to surround yourself with very resentful smart people that sit here bitching about how everybody else owes them something. If you're an idiot, you surround yourself with other idiots and you just watch, you just watch uh, like snooker on the weekends or whatever the fuck you do. I don't even matter. It doesn't matter. And then the internet. And so, yeah, you finally have, okay, I'm around my people, my mishmash of people. And there's the good people in there and there's the bad people, but it fits into a certain zone. And then the internet is like a back door to all the shit that you've left behind. Like you could be 50 years old and like, I spent 30 years getting away from all these idiots in my life. And then all of a sudden they all get to come back in. So, and the good thing is you kind of realize like, this is what normal people are like. And by normal, I mean center bell curve to the left. <laughs> Real question is, can you hold Tekken players accountable? No, you cannot actually. That's a, that was actually a book. Okay. Is he talking about Tekken? Now? Yes, he's talking about Tekken. Now. I told you this is a very free form episode. Just go with me here. Uh, Tekken. There's a whole meta to it, and they've changed a lot of the meta, like the way it's meant to be played in that to a way that's really not the way Tekken used to be. So a lot of people are very irritated about that, me included. But the one change they made that is like people cannot figure out is plugging. So like if you quit in the middle of the match, what it used to do is it would count as a loss for you and you would lose points. So there was a punishment. Now there's none of that. And not only that, it doesn't even tell the other player if you've been habitually plugging. And so Eris, this guy who's like a very popular Tekken player, he's called Avoid the Pubble. He says, and this is like just generally good advice for anything. He goes, if there is something that's broken, you have to abuse it. Abuse it 100% all the time. Because until you do, nobody's going to fix anything. And this, if you've ever worked in an office place, you'll know this one. You know where it's like, dude, I am being overworked. I have too much of a workload. I can't finish things. And they're like, well, just do your best. And then you get it done, but you're like, okay, so I'll, I'll go home an hour later or I'll put an extra work here or I'll skip some sleep. And you get it done. And you think, finally, okay, look, I, I really need help in this. Like, I know, just do your best. Just do your best. And you're again, you're like, all right, I miss more sleep. And then you realize I haven't seen my family in three weeks. Jesus Christ. And you realize that everybody, like your manager, they're like, get it done. And he goes, okay, I got it done. And that's all they know. They don't know you're running yourself ragged. They'll never know that until you finally snap. Like uh, my military buddy, the one I went back to go see, the one who got uh, retired. They broke his brain. Three deployments in six years. He had two kids at home, never got to see them for like their first two years. Anytime there was any like hardcore uh, mission critical stuff to do. They brought him because everybody else was sick, lame, and lazy or quitting because of the COVID thing. And they worked him until he broke. And you know what? They didn't even think anything of it until he broke. And they're like, oh, wow, we got to do something about this. So yeah, the system will always continue going along until something breaks. And because you're a nice person, you want to be good at your job. You don't want to break things. You want to do your absolute best. You want to put the more, you would rather break yourself then admit the system is broken. And yeah, it's like, no, abuse the shit out of it. If you're at work and they are pushing you to 120% of what you're capable of and it's not sustainable, you have to let something fail. You just do. Relax. You won't get fired. Most people don't get fired for incompetence. The only thing you get fired for 
is breaking the law or or sending a mean tweet. But you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Yeah, cheesing is just responsible, efficient time management. So they used them like a tool. Exactly. Helldivers commuter is the most funny. I've been meaning to give that a shot. Everybody keeps talking about how good it is. But I see a lot of like the, the hate stuff on it. It's kind of weird too. It's it's never about how much like not getting hate because everything gets hate. But when you listen to the hate, you're like, there's always like a thread of truth to it. You're like, is that the kind of hate I want to? Like if I ever switched to a gaming one, oh, I'd be shit talking sweet baby ink so much right now. Anywho, yeah. Uh, again, transitory lesson. If you're in a place that that has good time management. You absolutely don't need to start letting things break anytime there's an issue. If it's just a small burst activity because of something big and then it goes away and you're back to the normal, that's awesome. But if you're in a place that's habitually taking advantage of you and working you into the ground, like you have to. And here's the thing. I can tell you this. And if you've never experienced it before, you'll still fall for it. Like you just cannot learn this any other way than the hard way. I know this because that's how I learned it. That's how all my friends earned it. That's all my, how my students earned it. Everybody learned it that way. You would just look at your boss and you're like, oh, you're so lazy. I can totally do this. I'm young and vigor. You're old and broken. And then you do it and you do it again. And you do it every day and you get there and you get there. And then one day you realize like, dude, you got these permanent bags under your eyes. You got an eye twitch. One thing that fucked me up more than anything when I had to basically run my department because every they, they suck me with the sick, lame and lazies and the feminist is that uh, my eye started twitching. I didn't even notice. Somebody just looks like, what's wrong, man? I'm like, what are you talking about? Your eye. It's fucking twitching. I'm like, what? Holy shit. I looked in the mirror. I'm like, it is twitching. It took like six months after I got home to get to go away too. It was fucked. Luckily there was that. Cause if it wasn't that, it would have been something else and it could have been a health thing. God knows this is probably how people get heart attacks and drop dead at the gate for their retirement. Scare the shit out of me. Uh, we should do it. Stupid fun. The, the, the gaming podcast, just leave red morning behind. I'm not against it. I'm not against it. Or do you mean hell, hell divers? Oh yeah, same. Three deployments to Afghanistan, three kids, three duty stations. And when I was finally home for an extended period, it was shit and I wished to have Afghanistan back. Here's the thing. That's, I'm, I'm assuming you're not just using the plot of, uh, uh, what's that movie? Hurt Locker. But here's the thing. And I, I learned this one. And it's mostly because we had a very adversarial relationship with the, the Canadian military. But it's not that you miss it. It's that you're used to it. It's like a compulsion thing. A lot of guys in gaming notice this too. When it, certain games, it's like they were built to be addictive. My latest Digital Ryan video talks about this. Like games aren't made to be fun. Games are made to be addictive. And when they're addictive, you have a compulsion to play them, even though you're not having fun anymore. It was a, and I was telling the story about when I was working in the NRS, Naval Radio Station, the Squimalt, West Coast. I'm sitting there. We have two ships deployed. We're handing international traffic, search and rescue areas. It was a very, very busy watch. And at the time, I had finally, like, MMOs were huge back then. So I was playing Star Wars Galaxies. Remember that one? Old school. And I'm sitting there at work, and I'm dealing with classified information that you can't, and look, very detail-oriented uh, type of job, type of work, too. Like, don't make mistakes. You make a mistake, you lose something. That can have, like, international repercussions. So you have to be on, on point. And I'm sitting here and all I can think about is I've got to get home to feed my tat, my moisture farmers on Tatooine or I'll never be able to level up and get a blaster or something stupid like that. And then I just kind of stopped. I looked over at the thing, the message traffic and the modem beeping in the background. And I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me? And I, I canceled the game because I realized that's how it. And then World of Warcraft, I did like three weeks of that. And that was it. I didn't even make it the full month. And I realized all it is 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 a bunch of hooks and gambling type uh, things that exist to compel you to play again. I'm like, oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, so I, I mean, yeah, so same thing there. Plays out that way. And it's not so much that, it's just everybody tells you how awesome you are. The place would fall apart if without you, you know? I held this part together, my whole thing, and we need you on this deployment. Hey, everybody tells you exactly what you need to hear. And nothing is more seductive to a guy than, hey, Everybody here needs you. You are required. This place would break without you. As a guy, what can feel more self-important than that? You get in there. You're going. You're fucking, man, this place would fall apart without me. 
And of course, the only time you realize this is when it finally breaks you. If it breaks your brain or breaks your leg or something and you have to go home and you can't work anymore. And then, well, there's somebody else in the deployment. For some reason, that guy is now vital and irreplaceable. And then you realize, yeah, they're just lying to you. Not that they not that they know they're lying to you, and that's the worst part. They're not trying to be mean about it. They truly believe that you are the best things in sliced bread. And that's the feeling that, at least for me, that was the feeling that they got you about. And our big defense was, like, we did not... It's amazing for being such good sailors. Me and my, my group, my two mess group guys, hated the military. We were really good at it. Like, we always made an effort to, every time we hit a foreign port, to leave far enough away that we never saw another sailor. We, like, pretended we were just, let's pretend we live in Dubai. Let's go for a couple weeks and we'll come home during ramp. Or let's go to Thailand. All right, let's get away from everybody. We got a villa outside of town. We went to go see Muay Thai fights. I technically detested my YouTube video. I have an old video I had of, my, of watching my first uh, warehouse Thailand Muay Thai fight. And I was like, that's awesome. It's sitting there on private. I haven't gotten rid of it. Maybe I'll just release it one day out of nowhere. And you're like, what the fuck is this? Filmed on like a crazer. <laughs> yeah. And so it's one of those things that just everybody kind of learns. But here's the problem is like, if you don't break, you keep believing the lie. It's the same as being zeroed out. Like nobody goes red pill just because. They don't go red pill because, oh, that's a really good argument. That makes perfect sense. No, they go red pill because their wife divorced, graped them, took the kids. Their church abandoned them. Their family took the girl's side. And the guy's sitting there in, a, in the back of his van, broke, wondering, what the fuck? Why did everybody just abandon me? I thought oh, the father was the most important job in the world. Yeah, you have to get zeroed out in any of these things. Guys are stupid. We are stupid. We are stupid and we are ego driven and we are stubborn. And until something breaks, we refuse to fix it. We refuse to fix it. That includes our life. That includes our life. That includes our jobs. It's a very, very easy thing to manipulate, too. Just tell somebody how great they are. You're awesome. Ego. My manipulation article, I talked about the five different things to manipulate you. And everybody loves shame. Shame sounds good. You're not a real man if you don't do this. Everybody talks about frame shifting where a girl just runs her mouth or the guy gets confused. And all right, it's fine. Let's do it then. Fuck you. But a lot of people don't recognize the ego one. Oh, you're such a great man. You want to you fetch me that? All right, I got this. Great man does this. Real man would defend me. You're a real man, aren't you? Of course I'm a real man. I got this. And you go get knocked out at the club. You're like, fuck, that sucked. <laughs> well, at least she went home. Oh, no, she went home with that guy. Oh, fuck me. And yeah, there's, and that's how you know it's part of, it's not like a, a bug. It's not some manipulative feminist thing. It's just the way humans are built. Because you see it happening in so many different places. I talk constantly about convergent evidence, where you see multiple different things converging towards a certain outcome and while each one individually is a very you have very low levels of confidence in it taken together they all kind of like increase the the alt the 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 objective uh confidence you have in a thing and yeah so and and as much as i hate tying gaming into red pill because you know real men don't play games and yeah, fuck you matt walsh uh that's one of those things letology they work on ways to make you feel important and then they compel you to keep playing. There's scientists. There's guys on staff at every AAA studio right now that exist just to get you to put more time in. There, uh, Diablo 4, remember this, we played it at the T-Rex Army, played it on the second channel. There was a patch they made where they slowed down loading times just subtly. Because they're like, how much extra loading can we give before you get annoyed and turn the game off? And they found out, like, we'll do it a second lower than that. So that way they can go to their stockholders and go, hey, look, we now have the average session, playtime session is 67 minutes. Meanwhile, 30 of that is just like stalling. Stalling and making you frustrated. There's an egghead sitting in the studio right now where you're like, don't they have more game designers and developers? It's like, no, this guy is strictly just here to waste your fucking time as much as possible so he can look good on a spreadsheet. How noble are you? How great a man are you when that's your entire utility to add 0.1 to the playtime for an investor stockholder meeting? Yeah, I've seen a girl who gave me strong signals in the university, but could not talk to her because I got a serious disease. Now I'm feeling fit, but it's two years ago. Does it make any sense to approach her or does she lose interest because of, oh, dude, look, man, when it comes to approaching, you got, you got 30, you got like 15 seconds. That's it. 
If you haven't approached then, the moment's done. And here's the thing. It's not even that the moment's done. Like you're like, oh, you're saying that like it's so true. Well, what if, what if? Yeah, look, she might be into you, but here's the problem. If you didn't approach her in those first 15 seconds and your moment's gone and you're so hyper fixated on her that like what, two years later, two weeks later, you're like, I should go talk to her. Don't because you're going to fuck it up because you've been sitting here and you've built an entire world in your head about this girl, right? Oh, she's great this, she's great that. Ah, she does this, she does that. It's a very parasocial thing. Same as like, like I know everything about you. She goes, what's your name again? And nothing gives girls the ick like that because every girl's had a stalker at some point. Some fucking Billy has been sitting there hyper-focused on her for two years. She's like, I don't want to be made into a skin suit. And as soon as you start doing like any of those parasocial tells come out, the girl's fucking out. Sorry, man. Not for me. See, again, you keep looking at it the wrong way. Zach's like, is it a waste of time or can you farm something from the experience? The only thing you can farm from it is the experience of failure. That's it. You got to stop looking at women like they are a, a, a experience bar to raise or a thing to be won. Sniper game, they used to call it, right? It's never been about, game has never been about getting that girl. How do I get this girl back? It's like, you can't get that girl back. You can get more women. You can get good at getting women in general, but you can't get that women. Which one? Well, what about these? And there's always, I love how guys always try to argue it. It's like, I don't care, man. Go for it. You got it. You got it. You have the married red pill, seal of approval to do whatever the fuck you want. Learn it the hard way if you want. I, I don't care. It was, it was always my favorite part of field reports. Well, by favorite, I mean, it's like, it's funny now. And I need to turn a phrase to go there where a guy will come in with a very cut and dry story of like a cheating whore wife or something. It's like, yeah, guys, what should I do? My wife gained 50 pounds. We don't have any kids. We don't have a house. Uh, she slept with my neighbor, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, and you're like, and the guys will be sitting there like, obviously you should be leaving her. Like, what do you put up with this shit for? And then you'll start to argue with everybody. Hey, have you read through the sidebar? And he's arguing with that. And if you read through this, if you read through this, and he's arguing with him, he's arguing with him. Why are you arguing with everybody? Everybody here is basically just telling you the obvious. And then you realize it when there's one Yahoo that you've never seen before comes in. You know, you should really try to win her heart back and maybe you take some more, like some of that really shitty advice. And then they'll always say the same thing. It's like, yes, finally, somebody understands. And that's when, and you, after you see that a few times, you realize it's like, he doesn't want to do better. He doesn't want a real answer. He wants to fuck up and he wants permission. That's it. He just wants permission to be a fuck up. So yeah, go be a fuck up. So Spaceman, I don't know if you want permission to be a fuck up or not. You got it, sir. Or if you really want to know, in which case, yeah, this hyper fixation you've had on her over this length of time means whatever you think you're going to do, you're just going to fuck it up. Go talk to strangers, somebody you don't know. See, again, you're still, I can't even talk to you, man. So it's completely done. Stop focusing on the one chick. Stop focusing on her. Where is your second option? Let me, let me ask you this. And you know what? I'm going to be done with this conversation because I realize this is doing exactly what I said not to do. So I'm done here. Hopefully this is a learning experience for everybody. This girl you've been hyper fixated on for two fucking years. Let's say she died tomorrow, disappeared off the face of the earth. Who's the next girl you talk to? Do you, do you have a next girl to talk to or no? Because if you don't, that's your problem. Your problem's not what to say about this girl. It's not what to talk about with this girl. It's the fact that you have zero girls to talk to except for one. And so you're hyper fixated on it. It's a very scarcity thing. Scarcity mentality is what they call it. It's fucking ridiculous. Go talk to more girls. And look, it's not even that girls are anything particularly special. Every guy always thinks, well, this one's really special. She's a 10. She's cute. I've had so many guys. Yeah, I've got this great girl. She's a 10. It was actually one of my old clients back when I was doing the calls before I got jaded to the whole process of that. And I was like, all right, this he goes, look, I know you say there's no such thing as a 10. There's not. But this one's different. I'm like, okay, so what, what's this girl? Like, well, she's 25. She's got a whole bunch of tattoos. She's a single mom. And you're like, she does drugs and blah, blah, blah. And she put out the first day. I'm like, holy fuck. Just red flag after red flag. But he likes her. So she's a 10. And I was like, that was one of the things that really got me frustrated is that I'm trying to explain. Like, there's no girls a 10 because a 10 is your ego. It's not the girl. It's your ego investment in her. And the reason you have an ego investment in her is because you have no other options. When you only have one option, you're going to try your best to win that option. But if that option doesn't owe you shit, it's going to burn that covert contract. And that's why it was like, 
you're talking to these guys and you're trying to like give him, he, you came here for me to tell you this. I am telling you this. And then he's arguing with you. And you're just like, at that point, you just kind of run down the clock. It's like, look, it's, it's your 500 an hour. You can spend it however you want to. But the problem is like 80% of guys are like that. So I'm just like, do I, is that really how I want to make a living? Taking 40 hours a week to have people convince me to tell them, yeah, dude, just let me fuck up and tell me I'm a good person. And when I fuck up and I come back and get a second appointment, which most guys did, and get you a second appointment, I need you to explain to me why I'm an asshole. And I realized, oh, I get the game. It's that you want permission and then you want a pastor. Hi, I got a stupid idea. What should I do? Don't do it. Oh, no, no, no. But, 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 but don't do it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, you know what? Fine. Give her. Here's the thing, though. This is going to happen. You're going to fuck it up in this way. And this is the consequence of that decision. So good luck. Then they come back. Okay, you know that thing you said not to do? Yeah, I, I did that thing. And you know what you said was going to happen? I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah, that happened. And like, you know what the consequence was going to be? And I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at right now. So what do I do? And I'm just like, I, there's nothing to do. This is the consequence of your actions phase of this. So just here's the process. Here's how you're going to get fucked. Life's going to move on. And don't make that mistake again. Oh, thank you, pastor. I was like, do six Hail Marys, watch four Rolo Tomasi videos, call me in the morning. And it's just like, fuck, man. Yeah, it is what Chesty does for a living when it's legal stuff. But that's it. Most people don't want to win. They just want to be told they're okay. I really wish I had saved it. Uh, Hotep Jesus, I was talking to him on the thing. And he had a great... It was a PDF he showed me about marketing. Fuck, I'll never find it. Da how dare you? Uh... Zomboy, how much were you charging for those? It started at 50 bucks a 50 bucks an hour. And then uh Cooper advised me, he's like, Yeah, you're charging way too little. I'm like, really? He goes, Yeah, it's not even and he's right. It's because when you charge little, the problem is you get very low quality clients. So you have to charge more to encourage them to take it seriously. The idea is if the person's investing more money, they're investing more of their time and effort into it. So it's a way of like judging their ability to waste your time and theirs. And he goes, at the same time, it's just keep charging more until somebody tells you that's too much. And that's all you did. So, you know, and dude, guys are who are still doing it. Like, I think Rich is like a thousand or two thousand an hour or something like that. Rolo's like eight hundred an hour. I was getting up to five. And even then I was just like, I don't like this. And I just quit. I'm like, I'm done. Done. I don't like you guys. I'm fucking done. That's why I like the Patreon, because the Patreon is just I think it's like 15 a month. And then you guys come in. It's a group setting, which is great, because now I don't have that expectation that like, if you want to sit here and just argue with me, like, fuck, fill your boots, man. I'm going to use you as an example for everybody else. So at least there's something valuable from it so everybody can learn. And it really takes the edge off of the whole thing as, as like a group thing. Plus, it ends up, uh, there's an economic subsidization model that it's, it's talking about where, let's say you're worth a damn and you want to uh, work on your red pill stuff. That's great. But you don't want to have to spend $500 an hour to do that, which understandable. So there's like 15 an hour. It's like, whatever. That's like two cups of coffee. I can deal with that. And then you go in there, you do this thing and you work really hard. And for me, it's like, if you were to do this, you know, a couple hours a week for 15 hours, it's a stupid waste of your time. And you're just going to go broke. But if you're doing it for like 300 people and they all take advantage of it. Yeah. You can have like 10 guys who are going to do nothing but fuck up and tell you about their fuck up. But there's that one guy who's worth it. And so it's like, great. So those people who are just a fuck up anyway, are subsidizing the guy who's worth a damn. And so it kind of makes it valuable. So if you guys ever decide to get into any kind of, uh, any kind of, not even just this, but any of these kind of business models, I always find those ones are good. Subsidizing the good people or subsidizing the people that will take most benefit from it, but the people that aren't. So that way everybody has like a purpose. So yeah, it's neat. Pickup guide by a former PUA. Ah, you don't need that from me. The pickup stuff, you don't need me to teach it. I haven't been in the field in fucking a decade other than like the random catch and release stuff I do now. It's like, whatever. But I did, I did, somebody did find the annihilation method and stuff there. So like the old 10 hour mystery video, which it's so cringe. They want me to do a thing on it. I don't know. Me sitting here critiquing the mystery method in real time for a 10 hour video. I don't know if that's the kind of investment in the red pill I want to take at this point in my life. We'll see. Nonstop Dre. Oh, I'm looking forward to whatever $2 super chat he's got here. Ryan is so alpha that Tony Robbins looks up to him. Dude, I think you get off. 
I think you get off on saying dumb shit on these super chats and making me read it. Fourth consulting. Nope. Nobody went out of business. The fuck? God damn it. Why is there always... The only part I hate about the engagement in the group is there's always like, there's like one or two idiots that annoy me. And then I have to pause everything to block their shit. And if I don't notice it right away, I end up saying something stupid. So whatever. Anywho. Uh, we're a little bit ahead of schedule. I was going to go for one thirty. We're at one fifteen now. Start a new video and let's do some bants. Boom. What's up, fam? Got some big news to share that unfortunately is not so good. So I'm going to jump right into it. You're going to watch this video and you're going to cry. At least we can laugh at your ass as you cry like in, in the corner like a little f***ing girl in the fetal position. It was a simpler time. Back when those were our biggest haters. Former friends. Biggest haters. Big huge Trump supporter. Didn't go to the Capitol on January 6th. Isn't in jail. Has his fuck trophies for clout. What more could you want out of life? <laughs> Such a petty, petty man. All right, so let's do it. Let's 100%. What's old is new. Oh, dude, what's old is always new. That's the funny thing. Like, yeah, the Pearl documentary thing. That's a Cassie J thing. That's like 10 years ago. Because it, it turns out that there's not much to the human condition. I think Chesty talked about this, too. He's like, You'll notice that the entire cycle of everything, like the drama, the personality archetypes, the content, it all follows like a three to five year cycle. And if you've been around, you're going to know how everything works. And it's not that it's like some major superpower. It's just like, oh, this again. We're officially in the Andy Worski is waxing his nipples on live stream and JF Carapy's talking about race realism. Stefan Molyneux is making fun of the Jews. Like we're at that level right now in the 2024 uh, media cycle. And it's, it's, I wish I wasn't here for it, but I'm here for it. You know, whatever. Yeah, everybody thinks they discovered fire. Dude, I like how you put that. Everybody thinks they discovered fire. Even the red pill stuff. Like, dude, if you go back, like, my stuff in Dread and in Frame is stuff that was here 10 years ago and other people were doing it. If you were a regular in the forums and the subreddits, you would have already known this stuff. And but those forums and those subreddits have all gone. There's a lot of link degradation. Internet never forgets. And the fact that you want to find a 10 year old random post like you're never going to find it again. It's been buried. And then I realized, too, even then this same stuff was everywhere. Like there was the anti dump machine in the 2000s. If you guys have ever heard of this one, the anti dump machine. Great piece of work. And the so suave guys and the uh, alt fast seduction guys. And Rolo, when he did Rational Mail, was kind of like a synthesis of that. And then before that, you had guys on Usenets, BBS sites, emailing each other newsletters on men's rights and shit like that. And so I don't know who the who the original I don't even know who the names were back then in like the 90s. All I know is Mystery and Neil Strauss and RSD Owen. Those are the only three people I know of in that time period. And they probably came to all the same conclusions we came to. But again, it's just one of those things that everybody forgets over time because they grow out of it and they don't want to touch it anymore and they forgot about it and it's, they've internalized it or they've gone back and then a new group comes and they rediscover fire and then they go through it again. It almost lets you, you know, that whole right wing conspiracy about the cyclic nature of uh, of of history. Things go up, things go down and then, you know, repeat and repeat. The Roman Empire falls and America's now in the fall of Rome age of its thing. It really does lead credence to this. The two things I don't like about the red pill is that like uh, genetic determinism and the, and the cyclical nature of history. Two concepts that you're like, fuck. I'm definitely not as confident against them as I used to be. <laughs> definitely not. Yeah, and so that's kind of where the value is right now. Like there's there's two big things, I think, and I'm I'm looking for it. I can't wait to see the new crop of like, I don't even know what it's, it'll probably not be called red pill. It'll be something else. You know, the, the Dragon Ball Z boys, or I don't even fucking know. Maybe the T-Rex army becomes a thing. Where they kind of rediscover fire again. And you'll see all the same work, but with a different slant on it. It'll adapt to a certain, like instead of flip phones or smartphones, they'll be talking about, yeah, with your head chip and blah, blah, blah. How do you pick up girls when you got the, the Apple Vision thing in your head? I don't know. Oh, dude, it, if you're talking about PUA phases, think of the 70s. There was a whole 
leisure, like a lounge culture, leisure suits, playboys, jet setters, jet setters of the sixties and seventies. They used to call them. What do you think the pickup artists were back then? Jet setters. Their game involved cigarettes. I remember there's even advertisements for it. Like, yeah, blow it in her face and she'll follow you everywhere. Basically saying this cigarette will get you laid. And there was like, yeah, you go into the smoking place, you hit on the girl, blah, blah, blah. Nothing's new again. Which I guess is comforting because then you realize like, yeah, as no matter how many iterations we have, it's all the same material. It's just worded for a contemporary audience. And then the one thing I do enjoy now is Amazon really has I think has benefited men more than than we really give it credit for because the difference we have now from 2008 onward is that we can have like a rational male. We can have a praxeology volume one and two. We can have a uh, practical female psychology for the practical man because Amazon allowed people to be their own authors. So my, my hope, and this is my prediction for the new decades or whatever, is that because we're able to have more permanent types of of information that this reinventing the wheel cycle will probably die off we won't need to at worst we'll have like derivative one so somewhere 10 years in the future somebody will make their own version of the rational mail call it something else it'll be worded differently and then people who like were in their 60s will be like oh i remember that sounds a lot like rational mail and they're like the what like i think that's where we're gonna go with it but it'll be more of like permanent material. The male female dynamics things will be mostly sorted out. And this is the part that makes me laugh. Is everybody's like, because there was always this critique in uh, Purple Pill debate where they're like, well, if everybody's red pill, then don't, isn't nobody red pill? It's not going to work. And it's like, that's never going to happen. Like, what do you mean? Even if, even if you forced rational mail and like my books, if you forced all this red pill stuff to high school kids and like, you must read it and you must know it. You must get a plate to graduate high school, you know, all that, like that. It's not going to change a thing when everybody's high value. Nobody's high value. Well, most people are not going to be high value. And even if everybody sees this information, they're still going to fall into the same stupid traps. They are now the guys who don't get laid or will not continue to not get laid, even though they just know why they won't get laid, but they'll use the red pill stuff to, to seethe and, and cope with it. Oh, it's just because women are all hypergamous. Fuck these bitches. And the guys who are worth a damn. Like, I don't need that stuff, whatever. Like, I read it, and it doesn't matter to me. And they go out, and they succeed. And there's guys that, like, I needed it, it helped me, and it worked. And then they'll, they'll do well. That part will change, because those guys were slowly getting whittled down. You know, we're getting the balkanization of attractiveness from Morlocks and Eloy. And now we're getting to the point where guys who were starting to fail are like, like okay, this is good. I can pull this out of my ass. It's great. So that's my, that's my expectations. But yeah, you're not going to change. You're not going to change human nature because you pointed at the it's 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 really a Plato's cave analogy. If you've never seen the everybody knows Plato's cave is where there's people that have lived underground their whole life. They've never gone to the surface and they don't actually look at anything. It's just people behind them with a light and they have like these puppets and then all you see is the shadows in the wall. So their reality is the shadows in the wall. The idea being that everybody's like faking reality for you until one guy climbed to the surface, saw sunlight, saw real life. Here's the part they don't tell you about that analogy. Everybody loves it because it's like, yeah, getting out of Plato's cave and learning about the reality with your own eyes as opposed to letting other people give you reality. He goes back to tell the other people about what real life is out. You know what happens? Those people kill him. How funny is that? Uh, let's do, let's finish off the super chats then. And we're going to call it. But Destiny said we can evolve. Really? How come he hasn't involved a stupid Wikipedia reading Redditor bullshit then? I really fucking can't stand that guy. Like, I don't want to go so far as to say hate. But if anybody's found, like, how far can we get before somebody hates us? And like, let's just peel it back a little bit. Destiny is a master at that. I will give him credit. Uh, Zomboy, $4.99 super chat. It's funny that everything the Manosphere currently complains about in the dating marketplace, the red pill solved over 10 years ago. Yeah, it is funny. It's not that it's solved. Solved, I think, is a weird way to put it, like it's a problem to be solved, because a lot of the problems end up just being one of reframing the issue. Like, you know, when a a field reporter guy's like, oh, my wife's a bitch this, my wife's a bitch that, and she's this, and she's this. Reframe that from, like, from your own perspective. I statements, not she statements. A lot of guys get there, and they're like, oh, all right, this all kind of makes sense now. 
So it's not so much solved. I don't know if there's a good word for it because sometimes it's a case of expectations being out of whack. Sometimes it's a case of a problem that needs to be solved. And sometimes it's just a case of like, it's not a problem. You're just whining for the sake of whining, but it, to know the difference is kind of a big deal. But yeah, so I, I would say the, the red pill experienced it and wrote, wrote about it 10 years ago. I just wish there was a, a nice word to use that. Uh, nonstop Dre, when are you making the Apple Vision dating course? See, this is the worst part about Nonstop Dre. It's that if he were any, if he wasn't sending super chats to say this dumb shit, I'd have fucking booted him by now. But he's like throwing this money at me as his way of saying, what are you going to do? You're going to boot me for giving you money and saying nice things? I'm like, you fucker. Don't think I don't know what you're doing. Don't think I don't know. <laughs> the chuggy mail. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Anyways, that's it for me. You guys will have some fun. Uh, who do I want to make fun of? Nah, I don't want to do second for pennies today. Paranoid. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I'll make fun of Walsh at the end of this. So that's the new thing. Uh, Gamergate 2 is coming out. Electric Boogaloo. You guys don't know about this. It's like uh, gaming. Uh, gaming journalism was very corrupt. People were taking money to leave good reviews. Very dishonest media. You know, that whole thing kind of came and went and everybody made themselves careers out of it. And then now they found out this company called Sweet Baby Inc. was like one of those woke things that were like, hey, you know what your game needs? Your game needs more lesbians. And then they would put lesbians in there, make everything like all the shit you hate about modern games. They're one of the consultants. There's like 20 of them, but there's like this is like the famous consultancy group, because what happened was somebody put a Steam page up. Like, here's all the games that Sweet Baby has helped, has, has worked as a consultant for. And then all of them were just like woke bullshit, right? So everybody was using this list as a do not buy. And so they did stray sound effect, flipped their lid about it. Kotaku started making hit pieces about it. Now everybody knows who they are and they're not happy about it. And where was I going with this one? Oh, Matt Wall starts chiming in about video games, this gaming games, that everybody has basically got a fuck Matt Walsh thing out right now, which it's, it, it, Bless their heart. I love to see that I was I was the hipsters. Like I was hating Walsh, Walsh before it was popular. <laughs> and they're like, you were the one that was calling games for like man children. You need to give that shit up. All of a sudden now you have an opinion. He's like, well, now it fix now it gets clicks. And they're like, you opportunist fuck. Makes me laugh. His producer's losing his shit. He's losing his shit. So in his honor, let's uh go back to the OG. I don't usually post pictures of my kids online, but they're infants and you can barely see them, so you know it's it's fine. But a YouTuber named Ryan Stone, named Ryan Stone, named Ryan Stone tweeted, showing off the F trophies for clout. <laughs> so the babies are trophies that I'm showing off. It's perhaps not a surprise that a picture of a proud father would be so upsetting to the sort of man who clearly never had one. And guys, I'll leave you with this. Stop leaving comments about the, uh, like, well, what I think what he meant from the statement was this. That's just a little gag we do. I don't really care. Anyways, cheers. Seventy nine T twenty four fifty eight Learning Corp Little Red Riding Hood. Take one.